Today, I'm going to go over how to make and use RS NOR latches. I'm also going to show you how to use them to make a delay mechanism when you press a button. Okay, let's get started. The first thing you're going to need is two blocks, and then two redstone torches, a little bit of wiring, and I'm going to use some buttons to demonstrate the NOR latch, but they're not specifically required. I'll explain that in a little more detail later. And believe it or not, you now have a completed NOR latch. It's that simple. The NOR latch has two inputs, input 1 and input 2, and it has two outputs, output 1 and output 2. In reference to the inputs, I just wanted to point out that you can use either side, or in fact both sides of the block, as the input. In this case, I've used buttons on both sides for my demonstration later. In most cases, you'll likely only use one side of the input. However, with more complex de devices and circuits, you may actually use both sides separately. The NOR latch acts basically like a little memory circuit. When you press input 1, it will turn output 1 on and output 2 off and then you can press input 1 as many times as you want and nothing will change. The only way to reset it is then press input 2 which will then turn output 1 off and output 2 on and again you can then press input 2 as many times as you want and it, w it won't change. For the purposes of this tutorial here's an easy way to think about it. Anything that we would like to power we're going to attach to output 1. That means when you press input 1 it will turn the thing we want to power on. And it will stay on, it will remember that it's on until we reset it by pressing input 2 which will then turn output 1 off and output 2 on. To get a better idea of how you would use a NOR latch I'm going to build a little circuit. I still have the original NOR latch. The only thing I've changed about it is that instead of having buttons on the inputs, I ran some redstone wiring into the inputs. Let's see what it does when I press one of these two buttons at the bottom. Okay, let's look at it in a little more detail. I've got two buttons at the bottom. And the reason I have two is because you would normally want to be able to control a door from the outside and the inside. I also wanted to demonstrate that you can have as many buttons as you want. You just make the redstone wire a little longer and you can add on as many buttons as you want. In this case, we only need two. Now when I press the button, it sends a pulse down the wiring. The pulse will split in two. One side will go into input one and turn on output one, which will open the door. The other side will split and then slowly work its way through a bunch of repeaters, which all have their delays set to maximum, and eventually get to input 2. This will then turn off the circuit, causing output 1 to turn off, and the door will close. Finally, I just wanted to quickly show you what the circuit would look like in practical use. I've built a wall with a door in it, and it has a button on both sides. Uh, don't pay any attention to that really cool looking combination lock circuitry at the top of the screen. That's going to be my next video. If you'd like to learn more about it, why not subscribe to my channel so that you know when it's released. If anyone would like to check out my development world, I now have it set up to automatically upload every day. I've pasted a link in the video description. If you'd like to get a sneak peek of my combination lock circuitry that I'll be showing in my next video, you're welcome to download the world and have a look at it. 